Hi, my name is Paweł Spechalski and welcome to the second part of my INAV on 5-inch quadcopter tutorial. In the first part, we what we did, uh, we checked if the, all the sensors, and by all the sensors I mean barometer and magnetometer were correctly detected and configured. We configured the serial receiver using GASBUS, we configured the GPS, we confirmed they are working and the INAV can talk to them. We also calibrated accelerometer, calibrated magnetometer and we confirmed that the board orientation is correct. If you haven't seen the first part, I suggest you do because you might mix, miss some important features and uh, thingies, details. And today's episodes we will continue our adventure with setting up INAV. Unfortunately, somehow my board does not want to connect. Looks like I have to reset. Why this thing is always happening? Okay, I have restarted the configurator. Oh, yeah, and now it's working. In today's episode, we're gonna concentrate on two things. First, on the mixer. What is mixer? Mixer is the information for the flight controller, how the motors are oriented in space and which motor or control surface or anything else influences the position, influences the rotation speed. So, for example, if we have motor number one and the motor number one is located in the right rear corner of the quad X, it means that it can help to uh, rotate left or rotate forward if we increase the thrust. Every, every flying thing, is it a drone, is it a aeroplane, whatever, needs a correct mixer. And because our mixer, our quad, is the quad X, which is by, by, by pure coincidence, right, the default mixer preset in INAV, all we really have to do is to click load and apply button. Of course, if you have something else like uh, OctoX or even more, <laughs> let's say, interesting Quad Plus, you will have to manually choose this or for the airplanes choose something completely different. But for the Quad X, all you have to do is really select Quad X, hit load and apply, save and reboot. And after a uh, reboot, yeah, sure, why not? the mixer will be configured for the Quad X, which we are configuring right now. Next element is the preset. Presets were introduced into Nineav some time ago and they are designed to help you to start with some not so default defaults, because for example, when you have the 5 inch or and the 10 inch drone, the default values for both of them will be completely different. For the 5 inchers, we have currently three different presets in INAV. The first one is called Racer. This was designed for the 5 inch drones built, let's say, like two years ago with uh, not so powerful motors and older ESCs that can only do one shot 125, no multi-shot protocol or stuff like that. So if you have like two years old drone, this might be the correct five inch preset for you. Five inch performance is rather for something more recent, like let's say last year with bigger motors, 24, 2306, 24, maybe 2208 with the good ESCs that can run the multi-shot or even D-shot protocol and with at least F4 but preferably F7 flight controller to really utilize all that INAV can give you in terms of the raw flight experience. And you have something called the 5-inch GPS. This is very similar preset to 5-inch racer with, let's say, even with the F3 flight controller. It's rather outdated and my really suggestion is to, with the recent builds, go with 5-inch 
performance. Yes, it that says that it uses more aggressive filter tuning, blah 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 blah. But to be honest, this is those are more or less the same values that Betaflight is using for quite some time. So it's fine if you do not have really like destroyed propellers and bended motors and really crappy, crappy quad. This is really the 5-inch preset for you. If you have something older, then 5-inch GPS or 5-inch racer, uh, but they are rather, like I said, for older design with preferably the F3 flight controllers. We, in our case, will work with the 5-inch performance. So, let's hit apply. Yes, we want to save and reboot. And after the reboot, of course, because there's almost always a need for a reboot, we can go to configuration page and check that, yes, the gyroscope LPF cutoff frequency is set to 256 Hz, which is equivalent of the beta flight off, which is the default value on the beta flight. Yes, we want to synchronize loop time with gyroscope, and that flight controller loop time is defaulted to 4 kHz. Now, there is a warning over here. Pit loop time might not be stable if GPS is in use. It depends. For the 4 kHz mode, if you have a magnetometer and a mag barometer and a GPS, the pit loop might become slightly unstable from time to time. Because the, it really takes a lot of time to get the readouts from the magnetometer, but it will be absolutely flyable. All the F4s FNs, and F7s will be able to do it. My 6-incher and 7-incher both equipped with GPS and magnetometer and F4 and F7 processors are using 4 kHz loop. You to be on a safe side, might go down to the 2 kHz mode, but rather you should not try to use 8 kHz mode when you have barometer or magnetometer or GPS configured, because then the pit, lo pit loop time will be not stable. But 4 kHz is probably safe to be on the safe side. Go, let's go to 2 kHz and it still will be 100% fine. The last thing we should decide is the ESC protocol. Will, will it be multi-shot or the D-shot? Yes, if you select the D-shot and you have recently BL Heli 32 ESCs, you will see that yeah, this is ESC protocol is not advised, use at own risk. In case of 5 inches and 7 inches, this is really like a warning for for the art because it should be everything should be fine. But if you have something bigger and you want to use D shot, then you should really be careful. D shot 300 is safe all the time. D shot 600 is safe if you have relatively small drone like 5 to 7 inches where the cables are relatively short and there is not a lot of electrical noise on the cable. So this is 5 incher, so I can safely ignore this warning in this case and select D shot 600. If I would have slightly older ESCs, I would have to select multi shot, but I don't. We also have to switch the enable motors and servo output because we want our motors to be receiving some signals from the flight controller. And my advice absolutely never check this box. You motors should always be spinning when the quad is armed. You don't want to motors to stop spinning if the quad is armed because this is a shortest road to a catastrophe and uh, fingers cuts and uh, some things like that. So never check this. Personally, I would even prefer to get rid of this, but the guys are not letting me do it. Last thing on this page and for today, is that we should check if the OSD is enabled because we will want to use the OSD later. That yes, I remote is enabled all the time because, well, it is. Also that the telemetry output is enabled or not. No, this squad will not have a telemetry. This is interesting. So no telemetry for me, no 3D mode, no LED support because I'm not usually using this with I remote and 
Last decision. Last decision for today. Do you want to have the profile selection with transmitter stick commands? Um, I'm not using this ever because my fleet is usually uniform. If I fly on 4S, then I fly on 4S. Do not switch. Sometimes you might want to do it, but usually I switch this off. And, uh, and yeah, I think we are done for the configuration page. And also, this is all for today. In the next episode, we will take a look at pits and filtering. Until the next one. Bye-bye.